This isn't some BS transformational video with some teenager lying about PED use or just a video that recommends 6 months of crash dieting to get some abs. False promises at best and blatant deception at worst. This is my real story and the lessons I learned over 10 years of maintaining actual athleticism, health, and aesthetics while improving every day along the way. In the beginning, I was just like you. Average all my life, if not a little overweight with practically no muscle underneath. I remember trying out for the soccer team my first year of high school. This is when puberty had just started hitting all the guys. For some odd reason, someone suggested splitting the teams by shirts versus skins. Practically everybody was just so eager to show off that magic six pack of abs that sprouted after just one summer of growing. For me though, I just went from fat fat to skinny fat. I didn't start out from a genetic base where I was prone to having muscle. Unlike all these magical transformations on YouTube where the before guy picture practically had a six pack already. And so I know what it was like to start from this. To grind up all the way to making mistakes and hitting plateaus until finally hitting this. During this time, I went from 140 pounds at my skinniest to 170 pounds at my current weight. It took me almost 10 years to achieve this physique, but I want to share with you the lessons I learned along the way to make this journey to an aesthetic and fit body shorter for you. 10 years of knowledge in the next 10 minutes. The first lesson I learned was that to get an aesthetic body, you can't just focus on losing fat. A lot of guys out there imagine their ultimate goal of just wanting to be toned, wanting to have a six pack without looking like a bodybuilder. Because of this, they justify not working as hard in the gym, doing lots of junk reps with lighter weights, and trying to crash diet all the way prioritizing weight loss by any means. I'm here to tell you there's no such thing as being toned and that this mindset sets you up for failure. Unless you're obese when starting, you won't have significant muscle underneath your fat and getting abs is not just a matter of getting rid of the fat above to reveal them. Losing weight too fast means losing muscle along with fat. Losing fat and gaining muscle are both hard, but gaining muscle is magnitudes harder than losing fat. It takes an incredible amount of muscle to look aesthetic and athletic, even if you don't have bodybuilder proportions. Don't shred away your muscle just to chase an underlying physique that isn't even there or else you'll end up like this. Outlines of the abs and rib cage, but really I just look weak. Lose weight as slowly as you can and focus your fitness goals on gaining muscle as opposed to losing fat. Lose at most 5% of your body weight per month and only if you're overweight or already above 15% body fat. The second lesson here is to always prioritize weightlifting over cardio. Here I'm assuming you're able to regularly do both weightlifting and cardio, so I'm not saying to do no cardio and only do weightlifting. But if you're short on time one day and can't do both, or if you're tired and can't give full effort to both, always choose weightlifting to give your time and effort to. The logic here is simple. If you have no muscles, you won't have an aesthetic body. Getting lean through cardio without any muscle just makes you look skinny or skinny fat. On top of that, maintaining a pound of muscle in your body burns more calories than maintaining a pound of fat. With cardio, you utilize a massive amount of effort to run 30 minutes and burn 200 calories. But if you invest in building up one pound of muscle, that one pound of muscle burns 10 calories a day, adds up to 3,650 calories per year, and perhaps hundreds of thousands of calories over a lifetime. So it's a cycle where the more muscle you have, the easier it will to burn more calories and eat more food. The easier it is to have energy to work out, and then the easier it is to build more muscle and so on. Cardio, however, is still extremely important for a variety of other health and heart related reasons. So don't overlook it. It's just as a tool to build a lean and attractive physique, it's not as important as weightlifting. Lesson 3 is that you need to develop a healthy relationship with food. The notion of dieting is absolutely off the table here, because dieting implies a failure and an end. Ideally, you want to eat food that is as healthy as possible. That is, high in protein, healthy fats, vitamins, antioxidants, micronutrients, and fiber. Calories and macro composition doesn't matter as long as you get adequate amounts of nutrients your body needs, which is about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and making sure you aren't in a large caloric surplus. For the purposes of losing and gaining weight, calories in and calories out is the only thing that matters. This means you will only gain weight if you eat more calories than you burn, or you will only lose weight if you burn more calories than you eat. However, this is not the complete picture if you want to be healthy, so don't neglect the nutritional profiles of your food 
and don't just eat junk food even if you're technically in a caloric deficit. All this is definitely easier said than done and no one can just eat chicken, broccoli, and rice forever. So what can you do? The idea is not to starve yourself or deprive yourself to an extent that you can't stay consistent. This will only set you up for failure, so don't be so hard on yourself or extreme with your diet. All the same, you have to be extraordinarily disciplined if you want to achieve extraordinary results. What I found to be helpful was changing my mindset towards food. Instead of just eating for enjoyment, I viewed it as a source of fuel for me so that I'm not afraid to eat and so that I find eating healthy, rewarding in itself. On top of that, added sugars are incredibly easy to avoid with all the diet options and zero calorie sweetened substitutes out there. Eliminating thousands of calories while still helping satisfy sweet and sugary drink cravings. Despite these rampant myths out there about artificial sweeteners, there's widespread consensus among the scientific community and governing bodies out there that there's absolutely no significant evidence for any harm done by these artificial sweeteners. Eating foods that are low in calories, but very satiating here is key, such as proteins, healthy fats, lean meats, and fibrous vegetables. Ultimately though, the key to developing a healthy relationship with food is to find foods that are healthy, but that you also genuinely enjoy, and this way you can stick with it. To build muscle, it's all about progressive overload, which means truly working harder than you worked before at the gym, each day, forever. This includes adding weight to your exercises, doing more reps of the same exercise, or performing each rep slower to increase time under tension. Just showing up and spending time in the gym isn't going to cut it here. Proving your body requires pushing it to the edge, and you aren't pushing it to the edge if you aren't putting in as much effort as possible. You have to have that mindset of making the exercise as challenging and difficult as possible on purpose. The goal is to build muscle, not to make it easier to pick a very specifically shaped heavy things up and down. All the same, I found progressively overloading by adding weight and lifting as heavy as possible as most conducive to gaining muscle. After that, Add in time under tension by performing reps in slower and more controlled motions. Lastly, add in additional reps. For example, I prefer a bench press set where I did 8 reps of 185 pounds at a very controlled slowed pace, over 4 reps of 205, over 12 fast reps of 135. The compound lifts are the hardest highest effort lifts to do, so these should make up the backbone of your workouts. They are the bench press, squat, and deadlift. These compound movements also require immense core support to balance and will grow your abs as well. Secondarily, other compound movements such as the overhead press and inclined bench press should round out your repertoire in order to better target your shoulders. A change that's temporary is effectively no change at all. Any change that is worthwhile will have to be permanent. Therefore, to truly achieve a fit body, the final lesson is that fitness and health have to be a permanent part of your identity and lifestyle. Going to the gym and eating right can't be just small activities that you force yourself to do throughout your day. You can't rely on just motivation and discipline to force yourself to do things that run counter to your desires for the rest of your life. To make this change permanent, it has to become part of your identity. You are now the fitness nerd, the gym troll, the meathead that works out all the time and you like it. If you can't embrace this last lesson, then give up now. But my promise to you is that if you can, by following these five lessons, you will get that physique that you always wanted.